Hi folks, welcome to Nessie Ting. Today, we're going to take a, a look at a couple accessories I have for a Nikon field scope. The first one we're going to take a look at is this Nikon FSA. That's a field scope attachment. Uh, it changes your scope into more like a lens uh, fitted for a camera. Uh, another item I'm going to take a look at, by the way, that FSA is already listed. And the other one we're going to take a look at is this um, Nikon Wide Eyepiece MC for the field scope, the same type of field scope. Okay? Now, it says wide, but that doesn't mean it's a wide angle. It means that it has a wide eye relief. I'll show you that. And I also will attach it to the field scope because I have one of my own so that you can basically get the gist of it. All right, you ready? Let's go and take a look at this. Okay, so I'm sorry about the lighting. It's a little bit bad because I'm working at night. So I have to use false light. But anyway, here it is. Here is the FSA field scope attachment. That's a beautiful case. I would say it's mint minus condition and I'll show you why. There's a little screwdriver right inside here. All right. And there is the uh, the FSA L1. All right. Now, as you can tell, it looks like it's mint condition. The rubber caps are beautiful. Okay. The rear lens cap is a Nikon LF1, made in Japan. The bayonet, it's gorgeous. The contacts, look at them contacts. Look at that bayonet. Can you see how clean that is? Yeah, even in false light you can tell. And that's a clear glass, green inside. Gorgeous. Yeah? But notice there's a little bit of abrasion on the threading. Okay? Can you see that little bit of abrasion on the threading? It's really not a big deal. But it has to be mentioned. So let's put this aside and let's go and take a look at this, this um, field, field scope wide angle, or not wide angle, my apologies, wide eye piece. Now on the box it says 40 by, 60 by, and 75 by. That doesn't mean you have three. Um, you know, you got three uh, magnifications with one eyepiece. No. That means it's a 40 by magnification on a 50 millimeter, 60 by on a 60 millimeter, and 75 by on an 82. Now, because I have an 82, this is 75 magnification. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you this. This is really gorgeous. <sighs> yeah. Notice it has the, uh, the the markings on it in gold. Yeah? Right there. Can you see that? It's really beautiful. The rubber cup. I would class this as... You see that? It pops up so you can look. That's not a magnification thing. That's just for your eye relief. Okay? Or maybe a slight adjustment. But it's not anything like, you know, it's just one magnification. 75 by. Trust me. I use it. <laughs> Okay, but that, look at the threading. It's really nice, isn't it? That's like brand new. I don't know if you can see that. Let me close this down too. Yeah, you see how wide that eyepiece is? Now, if it was 75 by, if it was a, a wide angle, you know, it, it, this would be wide. But you see how small that is? And that how big this is? The, the, the rear end is tiny and the... The front of the eyepiece is wide. That's so it's relief. It's it's easy to look through when you're using it. Okay, because it's really super powerful. So I'm gonna put this aside too as well. And since how we're on eyepieces, I'm going to unscrew this over here. Alright? I have this Nikon 82 millimeter, right? This is a gorgeous gorgeous scope. Nitrogen filled. It's built like a tank. It's solid. It's really, really nice. Beautiful. 
The nitrogen field is so that you don't get that moisture on the glass and that fogginess. It's just clean and clear and crisp no matter what the weather. You know what I mean? And I've taken this out on some crispy cold nights looking at the Jupiter and, and, and the moons going around Jupiter. And now, um, personally, I think it's better for a nature field scope, but, you know, for looking at birds in their nest, in their habitats and things like that. But anyway, you know, everybody has their own uh, uses, you know, uh, for their own whatever, their own little things of what they do. Now, what's sitting on here right now is a wide angle piece. Um, this is a proper 25 by, I'm going to unscrew this, okay, I'm going to bring this to you. Now this is not for sale, but you need to take a look at this. Now remember, look how wide that is in the front, right? How, what? But look at the back, <laughs> huh? You see? And you've seen the difference, right? The last one was tiny. This is a wide angle. Now. Let me take this down to you, okay, so you can look at me and see what I'm saying. When you're uh, wanting to look at Jupiter, and you're looking at the, uh, you know, or the planets or something very far away, you don't want to use a powerful eyepiece like this. No, you use a wide angle eyepiece. You find it, you get it in, you, you get the subject in the center. Once you got the subject in the center, then you use this powerful to pop on. Let me show you. And then you just screw it on. Ba -boom, ba -da -boom, ba -da -boom, ba -da boom Bam. And you look through that and it's so nice. It's so nice to look through. And it's, I mean, it really is. This is really a beautiful eyepiece. Okay? So, now I'm going to remove this. Okay? Notice how I take, how carefully I've removed that too. That's important. Let me see, let's pop this on here. And let's go and take a look at this and let's pop, pop this one on, the FSA. Now, remember what I was saying that this has bayonet and it's called a digital field scope attachment. It has the little contacts because so it can communicate with a film camera or communicate with a digital digital camera. And when I say communicate, it just tells you the aperture settings, the aperture readings. It gives the, the camera some idea of, um, you know, what it's dealing with. Uh, otherwise, it just won't work. Okay, so you screw this in. Notice how I carefully I screw that in. You know, you don't want to start jamming it. You know what I mean? It's not a... Make sure that's a... I usually sometimes go backwards a little bit and then forward so I can. Oh, I'm missing it. Wonder how I ever had kids. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, anyway, so um, there you go. Uh, it's, it's attached. And now I'm going to hook up the uh, camera. Now notice that it has the little pin so this can get adjusted without moving the barrel. I'm going to use, I'm going to attach this to D7000. D7000. Show you how nice this is. And you notice how it wants to pull this back out of alignment. So you lock that in place, you hold that, you attach the camera, and there you go. Nice and easy. And then you loosen that pin in the back, this one right here, when you want to change the, uh, the frame. Okay? And it won't make this spin. You don't want the barrel to spin. That's what this is for. If this just this, this, uh, this part right there, it moves. Okay, so uh, let me see if there's anything else I need to talk about. The uh, aperture, let me think, the aperture setting on this, with this attachment on a camera is F13, okay? 
Um, and the magnification you're going to get is about 50 mil. And I think it's 35 mil or something like that on uh, a full frame camera. So it depends on what camera you're going to uh, attach to this. Because obviously if you attach a full frame camera, you get a wider angle. And if you attach a DX camera, you get a narrow angle. Okay? So uh, I think that's about it. Yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Anyway, guys, you take care of yourselves. Be good to yourself and be good to each other. And I'll catch you uh, on the next subject. <laughs> next subject or whatever I'm going to cover you. All right, catch you later.